In this episode, we deal with a cow with a weeping back foot, a terribly sore front left foot, have a ride along that gets me looking a little worried, and Craig gives us the thumbs up. This is the Hoof GP. And I won't let it rush when I see you dance and the moment comes when I fall. So today we're trimming 35 beautiful Holstein cows at one of our regular farms with a little difference. I asked Killian from Easy Fix if he'd like to come along for us to show him the ropes and get his hands dirty. Right, so Killian's not just here to look pretty and to be fair he's not even doing a good job of that, but he is here to learn about so he's going to put a block on this cow because she does need it. So you're going to, you're going to blow torch up and you don't want to singe it, so we're only doing that to make sure there's oil in the hoof. And we need to make sure any of that oil evaporates or burns off. Yeah, that's enough. And this. This glue is fantastic. And with that said, it's straight on with the job in hand. This is the first block that Killian has ever applied to a cow's hoof. Give that squidge around. So you can spaces. So this cow is what a white line problem. You find this with cows that are housed on concrete that have got tight turns. So if you imagine a cow's foot, you've got the outside wall horn, that's the architectural part, and then you've got the sole horn, and they're not connected very strongly, and cows aren't supposed to turn around like this. They're not like me and you. Cows are supposed to be out in the fields or in the wild or whatever, and they would do a big arc if they wanted to turn anywhere. They wouldn't screw around. When they spin, this part rips away. So that's the white line. Did you know that, Dan? Oh, you dig his own So basically, this is... This is called wall horn. This is where all the strength is. Then you've got the white line, which goes from here and all the way around here. And curiously, it's not actually white, it's kind of gray. Can you see it? It's quite difficult to see. Yeah. You see it like, it goes all the way right around there. Just up here? Yeah. And that basically there's a, a soft cement-like substance in there. And that is the junction between this wall horn and the sole horn. So that's the weak point in the foot. So if it's gonna crack, it'll crack there. And when the cows screw around in a corner, She's literally tearing the wall away from the sole and that soft junction is where it cracks. So that's genuinely why your, well not your, but your rubber helps so much because instead of the hoof cracking, the rubber actually gives. So the rubber is softer than the hoof, so the rubber twists and contorts, which saves the hoof from twisting and contorting. The rubber is basically like an anti-fatigue. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, Craig's just stood doing nothing again. <laughs> when it comes to the environments in which cows live in, Kellyan really knows his stuff and he's backed by Easy Fix, who really know their stuff as well. So this opportunity for Kellyan to come along and for me maybe to teach him something is actually a massive opportunity for myself so that I can make sure I know everything I possibly can about how we can improve the environments that these cows live in. Did that picked that up, didn't it? <laughs> Did you hear Killian trying to avoid a sneeze? <laughs> Although we can never be truly sure exactly what caused this cow's problem, we can be fairly certain that we can narrow it down at least. This is an injury. Of that, we are pretty certain. How that injury occurred, we have no idea. But we can put solutions in place to reduce the likelihood that these problems ever occur in the first place. So these problems are really difficult to trim because this hoof horn, like I was saying earlier on, is architectural. So it's really, really hard. If I trim here, it's like, it's just goes through it like butter. Whereas when I trim here, I'm putting like every bit of force into it that I can. See, like that's congealed pus, see, that's it starting to solidify inside. Which obviously, if, so if we left this, even pieces like this turn into tissue, and that means the foot actually becomes bigger inside. So then you have a real problem because it'll never go back down once it's solidified. But you, you're torn between pushing really hard and getting this done really quickly, 
but when the knife goes through with a thump, it goes straight into a corium. But then if you go too slow, the cow's in the crush for ages, and that's never a good thing in any way, really. I know this links up here because there's, there's dirt here and there's dirt here, so I know that that dirt has come from somewhere. So it's tracked from here down the way. But this is really, really gentle hoof horn. Gentle hoof horn. Soft hoof horn. Oh, she moved. That's a bad sign. Hey, we're okay. Right, we've got the bulk of it. She's not going to need any of this hoof horn. And we're going to get rid of these sharp pieces and give this a little wash up. So we'll spray this off first, get the grinder out and reduce all of the height here. I'm only spraying this off because it lets me see what pieces of hoof horn still need to be removed and what needs to stay. So there's little pieces here and here and here that all need to go. When you trim any hoof, the first thing you do is evaluate that hoof, subliminally or completely deliberately. When you pick up a cow's hoof, you're looking for problems, you're looking at the shape, the balance, the weight distribution, you're looking at every good and bad attribute that hoof has. But throughout the trim, you're also constantly re-evaluating that trim. Things change as the trims progress. Sometimes they end up worse than you think they would, sometimes better. And that's why we're constantly re-evaluating each hoof as we trim it. This spray has got alcohol in it and it thins the blood. So any blood that is there, it's thinned down, so sometimes it can actually look like it's bleeding more than it is. You see this part here has been grazed. It's barely bleeding at all, but on the camera it's showing up much more than it actually is in real life. I lift and put pressure on it here like it's coming away from the corio. So there's no dermatitis or anything on this. This is just raw, I say just, obviously it's a seriously bad problem, but this is corium inside. And all we need to do is make sure the outside layers of this don't become infected or anything like that so that it can reform and regrow good natural hoof horn. Actually, to get it right up off the ground, we're gonna put another block on here because if you look, there's not a huge height difference between the two. So our glamorous assistant, Killian, will put the new block on. Personally, I love days like this, working alongside new friends yeah, and teaching yeah, them the things that we do on a daily basis. It's days like these that really so keep me going. So you want the pick, pick up to do it as quickly as you can. As soon as that hits the block, it's starting to form the bonds already. And those bonds will just get weaker and weaker if you don't get them on quick enough. So you want to step this back a little bit, just like, just like that. And then I'll shape this in a bit better. Otherwise, what happens is they end up kind of tripping on this and they'll end okay. up walking, for want of a better word. So we'll take the whole of that front off once this is completely hardened and she'll walk awesome on this. And right. just as tidy as you are. Just as tidy as I am, yeah. We'll tidy that up with <laughs> Killian's pointing out my uh, flaws, of which there are many. You see that? See that? Yeah. It's hard now. Okay. That's tough, isn't it? Yeah. Uh. Better? Yeah. Once that's done, it's really important to take the front portion away from these two blocks. It's sticking right up in the air, and I know for a fact the cow would not walk well on them. To be honest, it's probably slightly too much of a step now. You can never be bang on right first time, can you? I got sawdust in my mouth. Some people that will be watching and no doubt already have typed in the comments that that block is too high and that she might not walk very comfortably on it. Now, if she didn't have a problem on that other foot, you're absolutely right. The block would be the problem because she'd be putting all of her weight on one foot. We've literally just effectively caused a problem, haven't we? But by getting all of the weight off the sore problem onto the good foot, 
the sore one can now heal and because it's so high off the ground, it'll dry out nicely and should completely heal no problem at all. Plus, we're just about to let her out of the crush so you can see for yourself how she walks. I would never have guessed that that cow had that issue before she came in. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't, would you? As you can see though, she's walking that well, she actually fancied a bit of a jog. So let's play a little game. Can I play a game? Okay. So the game is, what's wrong with the hoof? Let's play, what's wrong with the hoof? Killian. Yeah. What's wrong with the hoof? Look, the pressure's on, look. <laughs> I'm sweating. I'm sweating because I'm hot, but he's sweating because he's nervous. <laughs> Come on then, what's wrong with this hoof? Is it a white line? Nope. So it's here, it's up the top. I'll give you a clue, I'll be nice to you. You guys are seeing it from a different angle, so you spot it really quickly. If Killian sees from a different angle, he'll spot it. Yeah, I see it, yeah. What's wrong with it? Do you know? Well, like, it's, it's hollow in here. It's hollow in there, yeah. What's it called? A white line problem. So this problem will have been caused in exactly the same way as the one on the back foot. So again, twisting on surfaces or being smacked off something really hard. So it could have been fighting or pushing at head rails that aren't very good or anything like that. But what's made this even worse is it's covered in dermatitis. See, it's all slimy. Oh, yeah. So this is going to be treated in exactly the same way that the last one was treated by putting a block on straight away and then by trimming it. And luckily, Killian can put the block on. Block. Get you're, it? You're here to work. Just go and get it. <laughs> These easy fix boys. You're a slave driver. <laughs> in all seriousness, it's great that Killian's here because I can talk more about his products. Not to camera, don't worry. I'm not going to go on about it too much, but I can get more information off him exactly what they can do for cows and help them in different situations. So once we've finished, we're actually going to go round. I won't video it because I don't want this video to be crazy long, but we will go around the farm and we'll look at all the different ways that we can help cows feet and actually cows in general by using some of the easy fix solutions. Let's see how he's getting on with that block though. You kind of squedge it round just to work it into those little crosses. Once it's like that, that's it. Okay. Yeah, done. So you, could, you were struggling to move it there, weren't you? I was, yeah. Within what was that, eight or nine seconds? At least, if even five seconds. So they call that setting up, and you want the glue to set up pretty quickly so that if the cow tries to shake or kick it off or anything, she can't, because it's stuck in place. So basically what's, what's gonna happen here is all of this is gonna be stripped away from here. Normally I would just start straight away trimming away from here, but I'm gonna skim a little bit off here with my knife just to show you guys that this probably bursts out the bottom. You can see here where it bursts out the bottom. And it'll just start to open up into a big cavity here. Killian and uh, Craig are just arguing over the best camera shot right now. Craig seems slightly worried that Killian might take his job. <clears throat> Which is highly likely, to be fair. You make coffee, right, Killian? Badly. Tea. Yeah, he's not getting the job. So this is a white line problem that started up here in exactly the way we talked about earlier, but it's been exacerbated or made much worse by digital dermatitis. If we give this a bit of a clean out, you'll be able to see much more clearly what we're talking about. This problem here, right at the tip of my finger, has been the issue, but it's burst out the top, allowed bacteria to get in the way. And then pesky spirochetes, which are the type of bacteria that cause dermatitis, have got in through that crack and made the problem a whole lot worse. Now we've got that cleaned off, we'll just clean around the edges a little bit more, and we're gonna wrap it, obviously, because we need to kill that dermatitis. Otherwise, as this problem starts to heal, all that will happen is the dermatitis bugs will eat away the new hoof horn and the tissue underneath. Again, making it even worse. So we'll drop that and the Craig will apply this bandage in a beautiful way. Mwah. Beautiful. Who's the small head? Not Craig. <sighs> So we've just done about 30 cows. We've got two cows left to go and Killian is going to try his hand at hoof trimming. He's never ever trimmed a cow before. So we'll take it really slowly 
and obviously I'm going to be watching over them. This is exactly how people learn on courses right across the world and we've done this many, many times before so we are totally safe. You can see me here on the second to last cow explaining every detail of what we're doing to Killian so that he can hopefully replicate that on the last cow. These cows are extremely important creatures. They are obviously sentient creatures. They know what's going on and they can feel pain. So we need to be sure that we don't make any mistakes whatsoever, which is why we're taking so much time to make Cheers. sure that nothing can go wrong. Right, Killian's go. So what we'll do is I'll quickly trim the cow's front feet because we don't want her in the crush too long and then we'll do Killian's trim. So I feel I should explain a little bit more about Killian's background. Killian is from the southwest of Ireland where he was born and raised on the family farm so he's been around cows all of his life. So he knows the delicacies that jobs like this require which is why I'm happy to show him the ropes and let him have a go. Ah, oh, that's my work over for the day and Killian's just beginning, right? Okay, go for it. Step one is checking the length. Yep. The length seems actually pretty good. Yeah, you happy with that? And these, yeah. A good way to check, lift that paddle up. Yeah, it's the bottom one. And then slide it out. Stop there. I think you're pretty much right, to be fair. Yeah. Step two is the height. So straight away you can see that the outside claw is higher than the inside claw. It's higher on the heel, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so the length's right, so probably down here. If you come to the side, you'll see it's probably the right height. Yeah, it is. E even down at the, at the toe. Yeah. yeah. So you're going to need to lower that down a little bit. Okay. So get your grinder and go for it. Right, so... Using the grinder looks very easy to us all, but actually, you need to be much more delicate than you would all so, believe. Because you're using... You were using this part of the blade. Okay. So you were kind of looking over. So what you want to do is, you want to kind of look a bit flatter and tilt it up this way. So you're using this bit of the blade. We deliberately kept this cow to the end so that Killian could try out his skills on this particular cow. She has much more heel depth than usual and that allows for a bit of give and take. So if you come over here now and look, so your heels, yeah. they'll start going low, but there's still something you see it's still high here? Yep. You just gently want to remove this part here. Okay. I may seem a little overpowering here, but it's absolutely crucial for this cow that her trim goes smoothly and ends up with a good result. So, got just a wee rise there, so you just want to get rid of this little high spot. So all of this is fine now. Okay. Just if you look here, you'll see what I mean. Yeah. So you just want to kind of grade it out. Is it as easy as it looks? Yeah. No. <laughs> it's just really nice, just nice and gently. Usually when you're grinding something, you're exerting pressure through whatever it is that you're grinding. On a hoof, it's almost the opposite. You're actually lifting pressure away from the grinder. Just stop there, that's fine. So this is quite uncommon. It's usually the case where a whole cow's hoof would be higher. But in this case, the cow's got dermatitis on her heel, so she's trying not to walk on her heel because whenever she touches the ground with her heel, it hurts. So that's why this part seems overgrown, but it's not actually overgrown, it's just underworn. It's not wearing away because she's not using it as much. Right, so that's step one and step two done. Move on to step three now. So step three is, is to mold out the hoof here. Yep, we can help you a little bit here by putting this in. So if we put this nozzle in, okay. it's gonna separate the feet for you and this one will not interrupt when you're doing this one first. So is the stroke, is it back towards me or? So you want to hold, so you can hold it two ways. Yeah. So that would go up the way. Okay. You're going to go down the way. So you want it like that. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you grab it like that, put your thumb on the top of the, yep, like this, and you're going to go down. Does that okay. make sense? You and can use two it, hands if you want. And, and is this the one that take the wider section? No. Correct. It is, yes, yeah. absolutely correct, yep. Okay. So you want to start the cut and then flick away. So already, believe it or not, Killian is making a better job of this than most people do to begin with. Using the hoof knife, it, <laughs> the hoof knife, using the hoof knife is miles harder than it seems, as Killian's now starting to find. So usually what helps is, see if I have just a little go now and show you, you'll be able to compare it to how you're doing it. So, see I'm not actually putting much pressure in. Okay. See that? I'm just initiating the cut and then flicking away. Yeah, that's it. 
So remember, so you, you want to feel that part, and it yeah. should be soft, but okay. not ridiculously soft. Am I working on the right area? Do you need to go higher? Or? So you want to come a bit wider. So all of our weight is going on this part of the hoof. Okay. So as long as you leave where my thumb is, we're fine. Okay. So we can take this away and come wider. Okay. If you want to try a different knife and go up the way, if you feel that might be more comfortable for you, you can try that as well. Okay. So same hand, same grip, but now you're gonna you're gonna be going up the way. You're finding that easier. Yeah. Yeah. So sub thirty seconds. So you're creating a bit of a high spot here. Yeah. So you want to be getting rid of that as well. Okay. Just make sure you feel that bit of skin that you're cutting away at now, the hoof, sorry, to see if it's going too soft or... Yeah. I can see movement. Yeah, it's getting yeah. soft, yeah. So that's good, so we'll stop there. Same thing again, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly the same thing, but you're just gonna do a bit less of a model. So which way do I... So go up the way on that, uh, down, yeah, like that. Oh, down, sorry. So down, yeah. So it's, you wanna take this inside part out here, go like more acutely, yep, exactly. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, remember what step four is. Problem. Problem, exactly. Yeah. Check for a problem. So, you see any problems? Unless you're looking up here, but I don't think there's much. Exactly. There's so no the, pain. So, there's nothing really wrong with the hoof horn itself. This is, like we were saying earlier, well, it's, it's an infectious oh, yeah. lesion. So yeah. That, yeah, so she's got dermatitis. So, we're going to deal with that in step five. That is a problem, you're right, but it's not a hoof horn problem, so we leave that. So, okay. there's no problems. Move on to step five. Step, step five, five is to check for any if the hoof cracking or any imperfections, really. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. any loose and cracked hoof horn around about the heels, particularly. So if you see here, see these little folds, they're yeah. great for slowly getting stuck in. And that means that bacteria love it and cause dermatitis. So you want to get rid of all these little flappy bits. Okay. See, you got rid of all the yeah you've got rid of the vast majority and now it's going soft so you've done a good job getting rid of it this bit here just needs taken away yeah, you peel it all away with your fingers some that's really hard hoof horn to cut believe it or not because it it kind of flexes out of the way of the knife yeah to be honest you're just about there i would yeah. say i'd say that's it yeah we're going to clear it all out just by using this antibacterial spray. We want to clean right up in there. You see, it's much, much cleaner in there now. She's actually got a little bit of dermatitis all the way up in there, but this Repiderma will sort that out. At the risk of offending Killian, I'm actually going to smooth out that outer claw just to get rid of these tiny little imperfections, and they are very small. See how we've just got these little ridges? Yeah. So these little ridges, will cause high points, which okay. means pressure. So all we're gonna do, all I'm gonna do is just quickly. When it comes to caring for these cows' feet, I'm afraid there's no time for delicacies. We need to make sure that everyone is trimmed to the best of our ability, whether that offends somebody or not. Although obviously, it's preferable if it doesn't. Killian moves on to hoof number two, and we continue with exactly what we did on the first hoof. So Killian's just trimmed his first cow, and he got on really, really well. It is really, really, completely different to what you think watching it through the lens. It's really easy to watch it through a lens and think it's one way, when really, in reality, trimming a cow's foot is not easy. How have you found today? Well, being honest, I didn't know what to expect coming down here. Um, from what I thought it was going to be to what it actually was, it's a skill in itself. Like, you've seen there in the video when I went to yeah. apply the grinder first. Like I dug a hole, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that's, that's an exaggeration, but but still, it's 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 more gentle and it's more. Yeah, you have to be more, I suppose, precise. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with, with your cutting movements. It's more like tactile, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. We picked a cow that had some good heel depth, so even if Killian had gone further than he wanted to, there was still space there for the cow to kind of accept it. From an experience as a whole, like you and Craig, a really good comment. And I suppose seeing that cows just flowed right the way through the crush, there was little to no resistance, I suppose. You get the odd one that's got a bit of an attitude. But... Well, they all they all have personalities, don't yeah. they? Yeah, exactly, yeah. they do. To be honest with you, 35 cows, I thought we'd be here for the day. And like, what, it's, it's 11 o'clock. Yeah, it's about 11 o'clock, yeah. We've yeah. probably taken 45 minutes to an hour longer than we normally would. Yeah, because we've, we've been chatting and like, I came in here knowing nothing about hoops. Yeah. And I came out here 
I can actually apply what I've learned at home here yeah. straight away. So to explain a little bit about Killian, Killian works for Easy Fix. And the guys at EasyFix don't ask me to do anything and they don't really ask Killian to do all that much, but Killian wanted to come along to the day just to see how we did things here. Killian's an expert in the environment that cows live in and that's what he deals with. But I deal with the problems that cows get from the environment that they live in if the environments are incorrect or just concrete. That, that's pretty much it, is it? That's, that's, that's pretty much it. We kind of, in EasyFix, we like to bring the comfort outdoors indoors. Yeah, and I suppose the products that we have can improve the cow's welfare and just also uh, improve her day-to-day -day living but like from a production point of view as well it can re really um, make them cows like top class students and, and, and from a genetics point of view reach their potential, potential yeah, yeah their full potential yeah. yeah if you can catch a problem for it actually before you actually see it when you see it it's the problem but if you can actually I suppose get in there beforehand and put a process in place that they never get to that shown stage because yeah. you should be able to treat it before you see it really. Yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. yeah. Anyway, that is us for today. We're gonna wrap it up here. It's been great fun having Killian along. It's great when somebody else comes along because it kind of refreshes me. Obviously, I'm talking to you guys all the time about what we do, but when someone's here, it refreshes my knowledge because I have to make sure I'm up on it to tell him the correct things to do. So anyway. On that note, we'll catch you later, okay? There will be more content from Killian, so keep your eyes out on Facebook and YouTube for that, okay? Catch you later, folks. Bye-bye.